Conflict makes up the foundation of all the stories that we use in our games. Whether it's the clash of steel under a blood red sky as cultists summon a dark god, or the subtle political manoeuvres of courtiers at a king's court ensnaring players in their schemes, Conflict drives the drama and excitement in our adventures. And without Conflict, there would be no need for adventurers to rise up in the first place and fight. The land would be peaceful, the people content. It's through conflict that heroes are needed. Let's discuss the types of conflict that we see in games. These are internal conflict, which is the conflict within a character. This could be the struggle within a character's own mind or soul, their fears, doubts and moral dilemmas. Interpersonal conflict is the second, and this takes place between characters. It can range from a, a grudge to a vendetta. Personal relationships are something that many players value in their games, and the approach to it is what we're going to discuss more in today's video. External conflict is something that happens to, you know, against outside forces and villains. This encompasses epic battles, strategic maneuvers in wars, or a desperate race to stop a looming apocalypse or invasion. Typically we use all three of these conflicts to develop a narrative for our games to create a dynamic and engaging experience. We can give our players personal growth, the drama of interpersonal dynamics, and the thrill of epic battles and scenes. Character development is something our players are always doing, no matter what system we're playing, and conflict is the crucible for which character development is forged. The one thing I ask for my players frequently is to define their character motivations. These motivations will allow your players to make choices that reflect their desires, their fears, and their principles. For example, a character who is consistently choosing to protect their friends, even at great personal risk, demonstrates a motivation driven by loyalty and bravery. Conflict, especially external, propels the narrative forward providing the characters with obstacles and goals that will shape their journey. A good conflict can spark an emotional response from your players, and that's something that I find hard to achieve, actually, depending on the players I'm running for. I want my players to react, to shout, to laugh, to cry, and usually this is connected to their investment, to their character and or the story. It's curious that you know, I've played a lot of 5e in the past, and I've had many players that just don't seem to get emotional at the table unless their character dies. Perhaps it's the difference that they, maybe they are more interested in the internal and interpersonal conflict in D&D than they are with the external things that are happening around them. You know, and what, what do you guys think about what I just said? Let me know in the comment section below. It's important to consider that not everyone wants to take part in certain types of conflict. Perhaps the nature of war is too much for some players when the discussion turns to some of the more dark and despicable acts that can occur during such conflict. So it's important to make sure your players are comfortable with what you're running. You know, personally, I'm okay with most things, but I think a lot of people have got subjects like slavery and genocide wrong, at least at the D&D table. I don't think most DMs believe it that it's okay to glorify such things, and I definitely don't uh, want to glorify anything like that. We include these concepts in our worlds and stories because it's a major conflict for the party to stand against. About a year ago, I actually went on to start playing because I was looking for a, a Dark Sun game to join. And I did in fact find a game on there that was within my price range, because unfortunately it's a paid system usually. And it looked really cool. Up until I realised that the Dungeon Master had removed slavery from the setting. I'm not sure what her reason was for removing it, but I think that Dark Sun without slavery is like cereal without milk. Dark Sun is so cool in that it actually does things differently 
uh, and the idea of actually starting off as a slave that you know maybe tries to escape or win their own freedom i mean that just sounds so exciting and dramatic you know that drama creates tension and it's that tension that will keep your players on the edge of their seat not knowing what's going to happen next i really enjoy those moments at tables where you know things are getting tense and every high roll gets a cheer and every you know every low roll gets a groan or a boo you know conflict can really vary in how it manifests based on the genre of game that you're running as well you know in high fantasy characters might be facing off against magical threats and quests to determine the fate of entire you know kingdoms or or worlds in low fantasy the conflict is typically more grounded and personal the struggles tend to be grittier and more morally ambiguous uh i think like game of thrones really for, for low fantasy makes a lot of sense obviously dragons are always going to be there no matter what fantasy you're playing probably but you know in, Lord, in swords and sorcery conflict is more fast-paced and action oriented if you're thinking about like robert e howard and uh gray mauser things like that uh you know involving ruthless warlords and ancient curses and malevolent sorcerers you know sci-fi and steampunk involve advanced technologies power hungry industrialists and scientific experiments that have unfortunately gone wrong and i think the big thing is that you should still use these three different types of conflict no matter what genre you're playing and i think it's actually good to lean on the genre that you're playing when you're creating these conflicts rather than ones that can be done in every single way so for example you know like in the sci-fi one actually lean on the fact that you know, there might be technologies that people are trying to control uh there might be sci a scientific experiment that's gone wrong you know you're not going to be able to really do this in other settings and people who've signed up for sci-fi will, will will enjoy that right it really adds to the immersion of the game and shows your players the depth of your campaign world as well, which is always really good. Thank you for watching today's video. If you guys like the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos from me. Uh, if you have any thoughts or opinions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Check out my Discord. Uh, that's public. You can, anybody can join it. You can get involved in my community and also check out my Patreon as well if you want to gain access to charts, tables and all sorts of other stuff that I make rather frequently. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then.